Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Ghana SDG Investor Maps digital event. I'm excited to be here. And we will get into action shortly, but we want to allow a little bit of time for more of you to get to join the call before we start the event. So you're all welcome. And I want to start with a couple of housekeeping items so that you can feel comfortable using our platform and you can make the best use of what we have for you. So during this webinar session, you will be muted, but you may engage in conversations in, chat, in chats with other participants. And you can also post your comments using a chat box. You will see chat at, at the lower part of your screen and that will activate the chat box for you. So you can do your conversations amongst participants using the chat box. You also find a Q&A question and answer box where you can put your questions and you can uh, freely post them when you feel the urge, put the questions up there. I will do my very best to pick um, a couple of those questions and direct them to the speakers. And there'll also be a dedicated question and answer session at the end of the event where you get to interact and make your comments and your suggestions. So you will find the Q&A box and the chat box in your controls at the bottom of your screen on the Zoom window. If you have any issues, any problems whatsoever, um, you want to send a message directly to the help desk. You will see a help desk there using the chat box. So those are our, our, our housekeeping notes for this uh, digital event. My name is Kafui Day, and I'm really pleased to be the moderator for this SDG Investor Maps digital event. And um, we're going to wait for a, a while while you join the, the call. But... Uh, before we get everything underway, I think it would be a great idea for us to uh, warm up and then we get to know you better. I'll, I'll be putting up a, a couple of polls, two polls, just to, it's almost like a meet and greet. This is the first of the polls. So this is the question that I would like you to, to answer. What type of stakeholder do you identify yourself as? And you can choose between investor, company, young entrepreneur, public sector, NGO or civil society organization or other. And I'll give you a couple of uh, seconds to just click onto this. I'm curious to find out exactly which areas you represent to give us a, a sense of the kind of audience that we are dealing with on this digital event. So that's the first poll for you. What type of stakeholder do you identify yourself as? Investor company, young entrepreneur, public sector, NGO slash civil society organization or other. So I'll give you some time to, to, to fill that poll and the, the questions will come up pretty quick. Okay. We have a really international audience. Uh, I see comments from somebody in Oslo, Majid, Majid, uh, who, who's part of the call. So we have a uh, representation from all around and I'm, I'll be interested to find out exactly where we have the most um, type of, um, of stakeholders. I'll give you some time. Yeah, I'll give you some time to just respond to the poll. And then there will be a second poll before we launch into today's conversation. So you're all welcome. For those of you who just joined us, just quickly know that uh, you'll be muted. And uh, the poll has ended and these results will come up faster than national elections. Okay, so NGOs, civil society organizations in the healthy lead, 34% of you are from that sector, followed by others, 29%. And then we have companies, 13%. We've got the public sector, 8%, and investors, 6%. So the NGO civil society organizations are the majority of uh, people we have on this call in terms of stakeholders. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a second poll. And here is your question, why are you attending this event? And with this poll, there are multiple choices, so you can answer more than one of the options we have. We have learn about the Ghana Investor Map results, learn about UNDP SDG investment platform to network with other SDG oriented stakeholders, to follow up the 4BBT initiative and Ghana CARES program, or if there's any other reason for you attending this event, we'd like to know. So, just like with the first poll, I'm going to give you some time to 
put your answers in. Remember, this is a multiple choice one, so you can pick more than one of the, the answers in our poll, and then we'll get an idea of your rationale, why you are part of this digital event, the SDG Investor Maps digital event for Ghana. We'll leave this up for about another 20, 30 seconds, and then the results will come up. And then we can go straight into our conversation. Okay, so the poll has ended. And here are the results. So 72% uh, want to learn about the UNDG, UNDP SDG investment platform. Then we have 64% who want to learn about the Ghana investor map results. You'll be getting that, it will satisfy you. 48% to network with other SDG oriented st stakeholders, 28% to follow up the 4BBT initiative and Ghana Cares program and other reasons, 12%. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, where you represent and why you want to be part of this particular event. We're really grateful. And we want to say thank you to every one of you who are enjoying, uh, enjoying the event and joining us from wherever you are. I'm very excited to be part of this event, moderating and facilitating. And I hope sincerely that you will be very, very happy and satisfied with the outcome of this event. So throwing it back to last year in October, I had the distinct pleasure of being part of the for Better Business Together launch at the, in Accra. I was the moderator for that event, and I'm so glad to be back again. Um, the UNDP program, Investor Maps, are a really great initiative. And what they do is they showcase how we can build back better and move the partnership forward with the support of all its partners. We want to kick off today's event by having a look back, a throwback, on the highlights for the Better Business Together launch, which happened last year, October 2020. Enjoy. So we, we want to see whether we can take that again and probably give you some, some sound. But let me just walk you through it. So, so, for, for, so this, this, this happened last year at the Kempinski, right here in Accra, and it was on post-COVID-19 rebuilding businesses. That's me there uh, with less hair and no beard. Um, and it, it was a really thrilling event, which went down pretty well, and we were, I was glad to be part of it. Yes. I realized I just. Like You're done now. Okay. The global launch of for better business together. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, please be on your feet as we welcome His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufuado. I have a singular honor and privilege to introduce to you His Excellency President Nadu Dankakwado, Nicholas Chalman, Coach of SDGs, and Mr. Dua. Welcome. I thank the organizers of this event for the invitation to participate and deliver this address at the global launch of For Better Business Together. On behalf of the government and people of Ghana, I declare the For Better Business Together project duly So we apologize for the technical sound issue earlier, but you got the gist of it. It came through finally at the end. And that was a look back 
That was a look back to last year, October 6th, with the launch of the For Better Business Together here in Accra. So together with the UNDP, the International Chamber of Commerce, and the Ministry of Finance of Ghana, as well as the Business for Peace, we are gathered today to take a deeper, more intense look into the healthy investment opportunities across the country of Ghana in, 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 in alignment with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. At this point, I would like to bring on to uh, this, the platform to speak to us, the UNDP resident representative here in Ghana. It's a pleasure to bring her onto the stage, Dr. Angela Luzigi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, um, and welcome everyone. Honorables, representatives of our development partners, our partners in this initiative, PWC, Business for Peace Foundation, ICC, distinguished panel members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you're joining us today. Let me start by welcoming everyone who's participating in this facilitation event on SDG Investor Maps. It is going to be the first in our series of dialogues on the SDG Investor Map for Ghana. And our dialogue today will set the stage for subsequent discussions that provide a more detailed overview of specific investment opportunity areas in Ghana. I'm pleased to note that we have over 300 people from six continents participating. And on behalf of my colleagues who have worked so hard to make this happen, I would like to thank you for prioritizing this event. It really speaks to Ghana's strategic appeal as an investment destination, as well as people's zeal to ensure accelerated actions towards the sustainable development goals. And we know that there's an estimated SDG investment gap of up to USD 43 billion per year in Ghana, uh, which is equivalent to 50% of this country's GDP. And Ghana is a prime destination for private investment, including international investment, which complements public and domestic investment in order to bridge this SDG financing gap. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by putting the SDG investor maps into perspective. First, the SDG investor maps provide market intelligence uh, to investors, and it makes it easier for diverse investors to be able to translate the country level SDG gaps and priorities into investment opportunities. And this is part of a global effort by UNDP to ensure that investors across the world have a one-stop shop to access the intelligence that they need to make strategic investments in Ghana and in other developing countries. This particular iteration has prioritized key SDG relevant sectors across the 17 SDGs, but the list is not exhaustive. We welcome your feedback on other potential investment opportunities to be included in the next iteration of the SDG investor maps. And you may also wish to include these ideas in the chat section of this dialogue. So we really want to hear more from you. Our presenters will walk us through 12 investment opportunity areas in five sectors, including agriculture, infrastructure, technology, communications, healthcare, and consumer goods in certain regions. And we're also working in the future to be able to present investment opportunities at the level of metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. This will be able to tie it into development plans and financing frameworks at sub-national levels and provide market intelligence to investors that translates local level SDG gaps and priorities into investment opportunities. Second, the SDG investor maps are expected to contribute to the 100 billion Ghana CDs in investments that is envisaged in Ghana's coronavirus alleviation and revitalization of enterprise program, also known as Ghana Cares. This three-year program is expected to shift Ghana's growth trajectory back towards the achievement of the SDGs and Ghana at 100 by implementing the principles of Ghana Beyond Aid. Let me conclude my brief remarks by emphasizing 
the importance of curating transformative actions to mobilize and channel private investment towards the SDGs and to ensure their positive impact on sustainable development. UNDP will continue to support the investor map for Ghana as a vehicle providing for providing up-to-date and detailed development intelligence to investors. This complements the annual SDG investment fair, which the government convenes, and other investment dialogues convened by the UN and other partners. As we step into the last decade of action on the SDGs, ramping up domestic and external private investment to complement domestic and international public financing, while also exploring more innovative financing options, remains the key to unlocking the commitments that we all made in the Addis Ababa Action Agenda for Financing for Development. With this, I thank you for your attention and wish you fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much, Dr. Lusigi, for your remarks. You highlighted the urgency to meet the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and the importance of the private sector for their engagement to make this happen. Thanks once again. It's now my pleasure to welcome the Managing Director of Business for Peace based in Oslo, Norway. Now, Business for Peace is one of the core partners in the For Better Business Together. Um, uh, our speaker will be telling us um, how all stakeholders can take action to create a positive impact. Let's welcome with pleasure the MD for Business for Peace, Mr. Marius Decker. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, your uh, Excellencies, partners, and friends, it is a great honor to join you here uh, today. And I thank you all for your interest in taking a deeper look into the many investment opportunities that have been identified here in Ghana as a result of the work being done to advance the Sustainable Development Goals. As Ghana continues to strengthen its advocacy for the SDGs, government and private sector cooperation is needed to encourage further investments aimed at turning global challenges into local business. Back in October, we at Business for Peace were thrilled to launch the Four Better Business Together initiative with our core partners, the United Nations Development Programme and the International Chamber of Commerce, uh, and with the support of the Ghanaian government. Our purpose was clear, you know, create inclusive, sustainable development activities to help close gaps, promote new business solutions, and accelerate the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals by leveraging public and private financing. Realizing the ambition set forth by Four Better Business Together requires continuous and active engagement between businesses and policymakers, as well as local and global actors. All parties must choose to be part of the solution recognizing the interdependence of our institutions so that we can turn lofty rhetoric into reality. It is time for investors to look around at the challenges facing their communities and our planet. We now must consider how capital can be directed to generate long-term solutions. In recent years, Ghana has been a leading entry point into West Africa for well-established international businesses. These investors have come to Ghana because of the country's stable democratic climate, strong resource pool, and known reputation for its ease of business. Here they can invest, grow, and thrive. As we all know, investments are all about building relationships, and relationships are all about trust. An investment is not a single event, but it's a mutual and hopefully long-term partnership. And right now, this is Ghana's approach to creating a strong economy while also creating social benefits for everyone in Ghana. To help build these relationships, promoting further collaboration and supporting investment journeys within Ghana, UNDP has developed the SDG investor maps as part of their global SDG impact initiative. This is a digital tool that provides market intelligence on investment opportunities and related impact data to identify and increase SDG aligned investments. To ensure that key sectors, unaddressed priorities and investment opportunities are accurately identified, the involvement of strategic government actors, international development and financial institutions, as well as experts working in these areas are essential. UDP Ghana is leading the way by calling for all hands on deck 
to advance development expertise, strengthen local knowledge and presence on the ground and to secure both government and investor involvement, involvement in achieving the SDG uh, targeted investments. The investor maps ultimately serve as a guide to realizing economic growth, promoting social reform and fostering environmental conservancy and building more transparent and resilient economies. There are three key steps that we like to label the investment journey. The first is making the results of the investor maps available to the public, thus giving insight into important SDG focused investment opportunities post COVID. The second step involves taking a closer look at the main investment opportunity areas as laid out by the methodology of the UNDP, as well as securing local stakeholder involvement. Here, roadblocks and needed policy changes to facilitate such investments were also addressed. Finally, bringing together investors and SDG entrepreneurs to usher new solutions aligned with investment opportunity areas and the SDGs comprise the third step. This journey also supports the important efforts of Ghana Cares program to stabilize, revitalize and transform Ghana's economy to create jobs and prosperity for uh, all Ghanaians. I'm really looking forward to learning more during the panel discussion on how this initiative will provide transform transformative change in the Ghanaian economy and its impact in shaping a better future. Together with our partners, we see informed investments and committed businesses as critical in finding solutions to global challenges. With the SDG investor map soon becoming a public good, it is now time for many more investors and businesses to step up to the plate and to do their part. At Business for Peace, we believe all business leaders should have as their higher purpose to improve society. We call this being business work ethically and responsibly solving problems that create value for both business and society. And let me add that to be worthy of something, it's about gaining someone else's trust. If businesses are to be truly trusted to improve society, they must gain the trust of all stakeholders, not just their investors. Business worthy leaders strive to create real value by solving problems that result in net positive societal value, not just financial gain. Integrating this business-worthy mindset into investments is at the core of our future of business program. Driving impact development on a global scale calls for strength and courage. The audacity to believe that and not show hesitation in our urgency to act. It calls for role models. Here, we look to our Oslo Business for Peace award winners, which we call honorees, who embody the business-worthy mindset in their bold pursuit to create values for shareholders and society alike. In the global economy, businesses face greater accountability from consumers, employees, governments, and the general public. In order to sustain a competitive business, they must recognize their impact on both people and the planet and respond responsibly. At the same time, we know that employing ethical business leadership creates more opportunities and long-term prosperity, a win-win situation. We share a common interest in securing a peaceful, stable, and prosperous world. Links, to, uh, links between business, uh, sound business uh, environments and business-ready private sectors are essential to generating sustainable development, which helps enable peaceful societies and in return depends on them. We expect businesses to commit fully, to invest with integrity, and to be business-ready. An important quality of strong partnerships such as the Four Better Business Together initiatives is the willingness to collaborate across the public and private domain. Collaboration is key to the ambitious, ambitious change and growth we seek to achieve. As we connect and learn from each other today, we must accept that business as usual will not get us to where we need to be. We must now make the considerations far beyond financial returns and instead ensure that we Act, we activate dramatic change and help multiply the amount of capital to fund effective solutions. We don't have time to wait. The stakes are high and the work must begin now, here and everywhere else. The progress we make through impact facilitation sessions like today will help build a stronger, more resilient future for generations to come. Before I conclude, I would like to again thank you all for taking part today. 
I would also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to our partners at United Nations Development Programme, the Ministry of Finance and the International Chamber of Commerce, in addition to our honorable guest speakers for making this event possible. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. Marius Durka. That was uh, inspiring. And indeed, as you pointed out, it's through strong partnerships such as uh, For Better Business Together and tools like the Investor Maps where we can truly see change happening, not only on a local level, but as well as on a global level. We really and deeply appreciate your time, Mr. Durka MD for Business for Peace based out of Oslo, Norway. We are now pleased to have on this stage, Deputy Minister at the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning to share a few thoughts with us. Uh, let's welcome the Honorable Deputy Minister for Finance, Mr. Kweku Kwateng. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, I, I'm the, I'm one of the representatives of the president at the Ministry of Finance. As we know, um, we're yet to go through vetting. If I thought the president would assign us to that ministry. So properly speaking, I'm just representing the Ministry of Finance. Uh, I have to apologize for my inability to get in the call earlier. Uh, we struggled with a log on. But I listened to Mr. Docker, and I think um, he has even taken the wind out of my sail. He has said a lot of the important things that we have to take into account as we participate in these, in, in, in these engagements. And I guess we would repeat uh, uh, by thanking all participants for being uh, a part of this, this discussion and to express the ministry's uh, satisfaction and, and, and happiness that you, you invited us to be part of this. Uh, as has already been noted, uh, uh, considerable progress has been made in the achievement of our uh, sustainable development goals, but we all do agree that a lot more remains to be, to be done. And even though we said 2030 as the goal, it does not look like uh, at this point we are on course for many of the countries we are on course to achieve in same, uh, which has always called for a certain review of our strategies and to do the things that have to be done so that we improve our own chances of achieving these goals by the set dates. But COVID-19 has not been helpful at all. I mean, already, uh, we were looking at a financing gap of so 2.5 trillion per year. That is before COVID brought a lot more other competing needs with uh, the achievement of our SDGs. So we really uh, have, we really have no choice but to sit down and do the hard thinking and find creative ways, to find creative ways uh, of, of ensuring that sustainable development uh, becomes uh, as achievable as, as we, we possibly can. Uh, but as I indicated, a lot of the points have already been made. If the objective of this forum, uh, this discussion to adopt some kind of uh, an, an, a product approach, my understanding is that the private sector will go uh, after return on their investments. And so to begin to think of the achievement of these sustainable development goals uh, in those terms, in a language that makes the goals attractive to the public sector is definitely a good idea. And it could not have come at a better time, at a time when while we're struggling with the financing gap, COVID-19 has exacted its own setbacks. Uh, so we are very uh, happy to observe these discussions happen. 
uh, we'll, pay, we'll pay attention. We'll monitor closely the panel discussions and the other engagements that would happen here. And uh, speaking for, for Ghana, uh, we will take whatever uh, we will have to from these discussions to the management of our own, uh, of these goals, uh, especially the new ways we are trying to uh, discover uh, in order to ensure uh, that we achieve these SDGs within the shortest possible time. Uh, since uh, Doka already uh, made all the points, I would pause here and wish the panelists good engagement and, uh, and state again that we are monitoring closely the ideas that will be shared and we hope others will do same so that we could look back on today's engagement and say that indeed contributed to our improved chances of achieving our sustainable development goals. I thank you. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kweku Kwating, a representative of the president at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. We're grateful for the insights you shared and that you were able to join us to bring your perspective to bear on the conversation. Thank you once again. So that brings us to where we switch gears now and take a deep, deep, deep dive into the investor maps. So we have uh, two presenters coming up before the panel, which I know you are itching to be part of. So we have Sylvia Sefakosenu, who is economic analyst at the UNDP Ghana, and Mr. David Muller, who's SDG investor map specialist. And together they will lead this segment. So I would like to now bring on um, Sefako uh, to take it away. She'll be followed by David Muller. Sefako. Yeah, hello. Thank you, Kafui. Um, thank you um, for, um, you know, really sharing this affairs quite beautifully. We are off to a good start. And really, um, I just want to share my screen and then we can go into the investor maps, as you have just rightly said. Is my screen up? Hello? Hello, Kafui, can you please see my screen? I can, I can see your screen. We can see your yes. screen. Is it the presentation, please? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking at sample investment opportunity area. Okay, beautiful. On the slide. So go all the way to the top and then yeah. you should be able to. Then yes. We can go. So we okay. see your presentation. Ghana SDG Investor Maps. Yep. Great. Um, so thank you once again. Um, so um, you'd want to know what this whole investor SDG investor maps are about. So the SDG maps or investor maps are championed by um, the SDG impact at UNDP HQ. So the SDG impact is actually an initiative that UNDP is championing, which is actually focused on mobilizing um, private sector capital towards achievement of the sustainable development goals. The vision of the SDG impact is to create a world in which all capital flows advance towards achievement of the SDGs. And the main aim is actually to provide investors and businesses with the requisite information and tools to support their contribution to achieving um, the targets of the SDGs. And then the mission of SDG impact is to provide investors and businesses the clarity, insights, and tools required to strengthen their contribution um, to the implementation of the sustainable development goals. So how are they doing this? Um, the SDG Impact is really um, offering um, this support through three main um, tools. It's really product driven. So what they are offering or what we are offering, I have to say, is impact management, impact intelligence, and then impact um, facilitation. Um, so with impact um, management, we are looking at ways with, at which we can integrate the way impact is measured into investment strategies. With, invest, um, with impact intelligence, 
we are looking at providing um, data and information on SDG enabling investment opportunities. So as you can rightly see, um, the impact intelligence is really under the umbrella under which we have the SDG investor maps. And then we have impact facilitation, which really is about convening different stakeholders, the private sector, public sector, the CSOs to come together to have dialogues on some of these interesting opportunity areas that are identified by the intelligence that we conduct. So you'd want to also un understand what is the investor maps. I think by now, a lot of our participants already understand um, really what the SDG investor maps are. So the investor maps um, really are in line with the impact intelligence, as I've said, and they provide market, market intelligence for private sector investors to translate country level SDG um, um, gaps and priorities into private sector uh, investment opportunities. The maps provide insight into local market conditions, local SDG investment opportunities, and they highlight the business opportunity as well. As um, you know, the expected impact um, of such investments is supposed to um, turn out. Let me say that Ghana is one of the countries, um, one out of the very first five cohort countries that have benefited from this initiative. Um, the other countries are Nigeria, Rwanda. Sylvia, sorry, so, sorry, Sylvia, excuse me. Sorry, but um, we're getting feedback from the chat. So the, we want you okay. to kindly expand your, your presentation. Okay. So it's in, it's in present, uh, okay. presentation okay. mode. Fine. So it's, it's, okay. it's wider. We don't have your notes or anything. Right. And it should cover the whole okay. screen. We didn't have notes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because we can see your next slide, next slide. And we just All want right. to make sure okay. that. So let me escape from here. And, and speak a little bit louder for us. We, we enjoy your voice, but we want to hear it a bit louder. Right, okay. Yes, yes. So I want to find out from the audience I mean, if yeah. this is okay. So this is it. Uh, um, are you able to expand? So um, it fills the screen. Um, let me so we're just um, waiting for um, Sylvia to sort that out. And um, we will be continuing with her presentation. She is looking at the investor map presentation methodology and deep dive, and she'll be followed by a Mr. David Muller who demonstrates how the SDG investment platform works. And so that should be coming up in a short while when Sylvia gets back onto the presentation, which I'm sure will be happening pretty soon. I'm looking forward to the panel as well. There's a, there's a very, very diverse- um, Yeah, hello, coffee. Okay, so Sylvia, so I believe we are good to go. Okay. So just continue from where you, you left off and give us a bit off. more yeah. volume. Yes, yes. Is Thank you so better? much, Sylvia. This is better. We are hearing loud and clear. Thank okay. you. And we see better too. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, from where I left off, we're talking about um, the investor maps, and I, I mentioned briefly that they provide market intelligence um, for businesses to turn um, country level, um, you know, opportunities in, into business opportunities that can um, help us achieve the sustainable development goals. So the value addition of um, having the investor maps. The investor map actually provide diverse stakeholders with an analysis, information, and data about country specific investment opportunities built on policy priorities, development needs, and investment potential. So there's this convergence of you know, reviewing the policy priorities of the country, the development needs, and also the investment potential. And so you have a one-stop shop where all this image and then also they provide um, an analysis of the opportunities and bottlenecks um, in the policy and regulatory environment that could be addressed 
to improve the investment climate for the investment opportunity areas that are highlighted. So how did we do this? The SDG maps are developed according to eight step methodology. Um, the methodology consists of deep desk um, research in combination with consultation and, and validation of findings with key stakeholders, public, international development, financial institutions, and private sector actors. Um, so, you know, this, this, we have this eight step. First level, we collect country level information. So we review a whole lot of policy documents from the medium term plans um, to the budget, to the uh, uh, CP, the coordinated program, um, a whole lot of documents were reviewed and they are all available in the map to see. And then you will synthesize this um, through consultative meetings and then move ahead to go on to the next level where we collect sub um, sectoral priorities and then synthesize and move on to where we really have um, investment opportunity areas. Then we have conversations with um, investors who are in the same space. And then it's really like finding out, um, it's really like finding out um, the business case, the market intelligence and the like, and we'll get to that um, in a minute. So this is the, the approach I'm, I'm talking about. So we filter through all the national documents. We filter through all the national documents to arrive at investment opportunity areas from national level, sub-sectoral level, sub-regional level to specific, really granular investment opportunity areas and that can be uptaken by um, investors. The investment opportunity areas are underpinned by some 20 data points that are spanning from business and impact considerations. So if you look at the top, you have subsector and then location. And in there, you, that means that we define what the sector is. We go to the subsector, the target locations. And then when you come to data point on pipeline opportunities, we have business model case studies that we use to define the investment opportunity area. And then for the business case, we actually do calculate the market size, you know, get the uh, investment return profile, we get the investment time frame, the ticket size, and the some risk involved. And the interesting thing is that we also look at the impact case, sustainable development need, expected out development outcome. So you are not only doing business for sake of doing business, the business is actually aligned to the sustainable development goals because we actually align um, we align the investment areas to the SDG indicators, and then to um, we, 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 we align them to the goals, first of all, and then to specific indicators. And then we identify stakeholders that are going to be impacted by investing in the area. And then the outcome and impact, and also the IMP impact classification. Um, the last data set, um, set of data points that we have in the map is the policy environment, the regulatory environment, financial environment, and then active actors. So this is really a one-stop shop where you find de real detailed granular information concerning an investment opportunity area. So what is the case for Ghana? So in this first iteration, as Angela mentioned in her speech, we are looking at some five main sectors, agriculture, infrastructure, technology, um, te um, technology, health care, and then consumer goods. And really the justifications are there. I mean, I think um, when we were having a lot of the consultations, it resonated with quite a number of public um, stakeholders that we consulted that the, the areas that we have highlighted are indeed priorities, development priorities, and then um, for development needs and policy priorities for the country. So for 
these five sectors, we have 12 investment opportunity areas that have emerged with a lot of comprehensive business and impact case data. And um, so they have all the data needs and data requirement that I mentioned when I talked about the 20 data points. So um, we are talking about investment in affordable irrigation systems and dams, fish breeding or uh, fish farming, storage infrastructure and logistics services for grain value chains, integrated farm operations and management systems, IoT and agri-business analytics for the agri-sector. And then for the infrastructure, we are talking about affordable housing, road construction and maintenance, collection and recycling of electronic waste, sanitation services for unserved areas. And then for healthcare, we're talking about e-healthcare solutions, drone transportation solutions. Um, and then for um, consumer goods, we're talking about um, uh, manufacturing and distribution of improved cooking um, stove. So in brief, these are the areas that are highlighted by the investor maps, the 12 areas. So now what we want to do is to have, you know, go a bit into deep into um, some of the investment opportunity areas that are highlighted and to showcase some of the data points. All these are supposed to be loaded online for any investor anywhere to, by a click of a knob, see the information that has been provided. So here we go. Um, for the agri sector, we have an, um, affordable irrigation systems and dams as one of the um, investment opportunity areas. And here the business model is identified as investing in small scale solutions, such as affordable irrigation solar systems and water dams through private investment in one-stop shop solutions and pay as you go models or lease to own models. So you can see, um, as I mentioned, where you can actually have some of these in, uh, um, investment opportunity areas. You have it's real countrywide and really why is this the case? Because if you look at the development need, we are talking about Ghana having one of the lowest percentage of irrigated land in Africa, being only about 1.6%. Meanwhile, there's a huge potential of about 1.9 million that um, investments can actually be channeled to. And if we are able to invest in these areas, we are looking at getting some important uh, development outcomes, improving food security, improving nutrition at the household level and increasing our agri value chain development, which are very important elements for, you know, an element and component of our, of our national budgets. Um, stakeholders impacted are farmers, food markets, small and medium size, um, you know, farmers, and then like the enabling environment. And so we have done the whole research into this. Few financial incentives for irrigation development in Ghana exist, but there are actual incentives for foreign companies, um, you know, to, to go into the sector. Um, in terms of the classification, um, the IMP classification, we are talking about this is, 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 is classified as C. That means we need to contribute to, I mean, this investment will contribute to the solution. Here's the market size. So investment in agri-tech startups, for instance, uh, um, grew at 63% between 2010 and 2015 alone, at some 63% um, um, CAGR. So the study actually shows that you can, you can, you can, the, Agri sector is going to grow, the agri tech sector is going to grow at 22.5 billion in value by 2025. So there's a huge opportunity and there's a huge market um, opportunity for uptake. Um, and yet also, um, there's also a, a good return profile. So for instance, in Ghana, 
when if you invest in um, small scale irrigations, like uh, you, you are, your return rate is about 14%. If you did um, dams, your return rate is about 16. And our study cases that we've done has shown that elsewhere in Kenya, um, up to about 20% return rates could be received. And then in terms of the time frame expectation, this is a short to medium terms, um, small scale irrigation, uh, you know, um, and then for the long term is for integrated solutions. And so between seven to 10 years, we can already expect um, to, to make your returns. There are some actors in this um, regard, the international financial institutions. We have uh, the public sector, Ghana Irrigation Development Authority um, regulating the sector. And the case study we use is Farmaline. And we have other case studies for, for view. So here's also the case of fish breeding. Huge potential, huge potential in terms, because Ghanaians actually use me, uh, uh, fish as one of their main proteins. And yet we are exporting and we are importing into, we are a net importer of fish into the country of about 40%. And so there's a, there's the, a big opportunity for investors to invest in, um, you know, sustainable breeding of high value fish, um, such as tilapia, catfish, and the like. We take it for granted, but it's a business opportunity that must be um, looked at. And then the return, what is important is that um, the indicative return profile is, is 14% for small scale. Um, no, I'm talking fish farming, yeah. So the, the um, indicative return profile is 24%, yeah. 24% um, for fish breeding. And here, there are no specific financial incentives dedicated directly to scaling aquaculture, um, but investors may actually benefit from some in commercial incentives like uh, custom import duties and exemptions and VAT exemptions and the like. And then when you come to health, one of the business model, uh, one of the investment opportunity area we identify is e-healthcare solutions. Here we say we are talking about. Sorry, I think it's just flipped. Yeah. Here we are talking about some four thousand healthcare facilities in Ghana um, that are really um, uh, that do not really have integrated data and that have unreliable sources of um, data, and then wherever they exist, they are fragmented and not really accessible in real time. So there's a huge opportunity for investors to take a look at this sector, to see how they can invest with a good return profile of some 23.1, uh, 27.1 percentage. And then the time frame is short term. This investment benefits stakeholders. Um, it's not contributing to the solution, it's benefiting the stakeholders in terms of the IMP classification. And then women, children start to benefit hugely from investment of the sort. And then drones transportation solutions is an area we are identified um, with a good uh, um, you know, return profile also. Um, in Ghana, the only person we know or the only organization we know, institution we know who are into this are zipline. So even though the aviation policy does not specify the use of medical drones, for instance, the, gov the current partnership that um, Zipline has with government shows that there's a huge political will to develop the sector. Here, we're talking about some 998 clinics, 140 district hospitals, 1,004 health centers, 347 hospitals, and, eight, and 38 clinics, polyclinics, that can actually benefit from such, you know, um, such an investment. And mainly we are looking at areas, um, hard to reach areas, rural, remote areas, but also for even places like the central region, um, th there's the opportunity to invest. 
internet media and services. Here we're thinking about affordable mobile internet hotspots for rural areas. Return rate is 18% um, to about 22%. The time frame expectation is between medium to long term. Um, what is the uh, development need? Here we're talking about some only 5% 4G mobile broadband penetration in Ghana as of 2018. Um, so now we, we are already in the era of 5G. So if only 4% um, of Ghanaians have access, if only 5% of Ghanaians have access to 4G, what about 5G? You know, so there's that huge potential of providing people with good internet um, and then hotspots, especially in the rural areas. Because if you look at the data, it shows that the, the urban areas are, we have higher rates of um, access to internet in the, in the urban areas than we do in the rural areas, about 27.4% in the rural areas. Yeah, so um, Ghana actually has planned, believe it or not, it's in the coordinated plan that Ghana wants to be a regional ICT hub and Ghana has actually a very liberalized telecoms and information technology market. And um, it is regulated by two powerful institutions. Of course, not only the other institutions like the NITA, but the two main um, institutions that regulate the sector are Ministry of Communication and the National Communications Authority. This investment in terms of classification is B, it benefits the stakeholders. And then here is the business case. Um, the case study is MTN. Um, MTN, we know everywhere you go, they have a huge chunk of um, the current market size. Last but not the least, we have improved cook stoves um, as one of the investment opportunity areas. And here um, we're talking about private investment in terms of business model. We're talking about, 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 about private investment in upscaling of manufacturing and distribution of locally made LPG or improved cooking stoves for government programs and private um, customers. It's a good return rate. Um, you have about 20 to 24% rate. It's a short to medium term um, investment. Um, but also in terms of the data or the development need, only about 21% of Ghanaians have access to clean fuels for, and technologies for cooking. And many of them, there's a huge rate in terms of death rates attributable to household air pollution. So if you take each 100,000, you have about 204 people dying out of um, um, household air pollution. So, if we want to bring a solution to this, and you know, this actually affects the SDGs indicators. And I forgot to actually mention that if you look at the top right corner, we have the SDGs that are being affected um, by this investment there. So you have SDG um, seven, that is affordable and clean energy. You have um, decent work and economic growth, SDG eight, and then SDG nine, industry innovation and infrastructure as some of the SDGs that are aligned to this specific investment. And here, I'm proud to say the case study is UNDP C for all cook stoves. A UNDP has done some tremendous work in this area um, where we support actually the production of clean cook stoves. So to bring it to an end, this is just the beginning of a long journey. <laughs> um, we are looking forward to really having SDG impact investor uh, SDG impact investor convenience. Here, we want to not only um, you know provide the, the information online and then leave it at that. We want to engage with private sector and different stakeholders on the ideas that we can have, on the connections, the tools, the use of the tools, and also on specific uptake of the investor map um, opportunity areas that have been highlighted. So UNDP will be hosting in the country office 
um, such dialogues and such convenings. And um, I, I pray and hope that many of our participants will find it interesting to be part of such conversations. On this note, I want to say um, that thank you, but before I say thank you, I want to say when profit meets purpose, there's, SD, uh, there's um, social impact. So um, businesses shouldn't really leave no one behind um, in their businesses. Thank you, Kofi. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sylvia Safako Senu, Economic Analyst at the UNDP for your presentation, your deep dive, the methodology as far as the investor maps are concerned. Um, briefly, you mentioned some figures. Were you talking USD or Ghana CDs before I bring on David Muller? Okay, Safako, so which figures, yes. yes, yes, Kofi, I can hear you. Which figures yes. you refer to, please? Some, sometime after the MTN presentation, you were talking about some figures around that time. Were they, were they, were they dollars or CDs? MTN presentation? Yeah, 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 no, you, you mentioned MTN, some uh, case study where M you talked about MTN, and then not long after that, you mentioned some figures. But if you can't remember, not a problem. Um, well, there's, a question, there's a question that I want to ask you uh, quickly. So mm -hmm. it's uh, basically a question that came from the audience who were um, listening intently. So yes. this, is the, this is the question. It's going to come up pretty soon. Uh, but before that, I just want to say that uh, Ghana Federation of Forest and Farm Producers say they are very interested in the case for small-scale irrigation. So that's one thing that you may want to hear about um, as feedback to your, your question, your, your presentation. I am looking for the question that, uh, yes, this is a question. So there is a huge investment opportunity in the agri-tech sector in Ghana. How will private and public stakeholders support young people to take part in this opportunity as far as agri-tech is concerned? Okay. Yeah, you want me to take it now? Yes, no, no I just want you to just give us a brief res uh, response to okay. that. How do okay. young people take advantage of these opportunities in agri-tech? Okay, so um, if um, I may, I spoke a bit about agri-tech during my presentation. Um, and I, I mentioned that there are a lot of, um, you know, actors involved in there. There are um, investment, um, the international financial institutions that are in there when it comes to, even though the sector is not really regulated and we do not really have a lot of, um, you know, uh, um, incentives. So I want to um, go back to that again. Yes. Okay. So did I mention as a tech? Yeah. So, um, in terms of a Greek, we, I mean, the, the technology, yes, and I think I've failed to put it in here. It's one of the investment opportunity areas that have been highlighted, actually. And um, I want to say that um, there are different actors that are um, in there actually supporting the, um, the sector. So you have different international financial institutions that are in there. But you know, when it's like I mentioned, even though Ghana has said they want to be um, to uptake I am in uh, digitization, a lot of the different policies are talking about uptake of digitization, um, using ICT tools and the like. We do not really have um, concrete, let me put it that way, support systems um, that are put in place by government to say that, okay, this is where um, young people can go to when it comes to the development of such solutions. But the interesting thing is there are a lot of investors in there, private sector participation in there. So you have a lot of these hubs that are coming up and supporting young people um, in their quest for innovations and you know, helping them develop some of the solutions in the area. Um, little, little, little dotted initiatives here and there. But right. um, I think they all culminate into the big picture of support, only if young people are aware of them. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvia Seno, economic analyst at UNEP Ghana. We're really grateful for taking us into that deep dive as far as the investor maps uh, are concerned, as well as the methodology as well. Now, we want to hear from SDG investor maps specialists, uh, David Muller, and he is going to take us to a demonstration of the SDG investment platform. Mr. Muller, take it away, please. Thank you, sir. Um, I hope you can all hear and hear me and see my screen. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues. And thank you, Sylvia, for presenting the results so eloquently um, of the SDG Investor Map in Ghana. Um, I think in the beginning, we've seen that there's a lot of interest about how um, the public can access the data. And the, the answer here really is the SDG Investment Platform, which I'm going to give you a little preview of um, just now. The good news, I think, as alluded to, is it's going to be accessible to everyone, investors, including uh, as well as other stakeholders. And it's going to be a, a public good where you'll have results from Ghana, but also from all the other countries that are participating in the SDG investor maps. So you'll have global data, essentially. So when we look at the uh, at, uh, platform, we see first sort of an introduction in terms of what it offers. Of course, at the heart of it are the investment um, opportunity areas that um, uh, Silvia has uh, spoken about, but we also have other resources um, as well as um, talk about some of the partners that we have, um, including also additional tools that we have at SDG Impact. Important to note here that we are working very closely with some of the key um, stakeholders in this space, both um, from a sustainable um, financing perspective for SDGs, but also with regards to managing and measuring impact. So. For example, just mentioning the uh, UNEP um, partnership, as well as um, our collaboration with the impact management project that we've also come across in the sample investment opportunity areas. If we then go into um, the SDG investor map, which really is, um, of course, the topic of today's discussion, we first see an introduction on the platform so that everybody really knows um, what, what we are being offered here on this side who the data is for, uh, what you can do with the data, and how you're also, um, or how we as UNDP with all our partners have um, reached this data. And I think that's also where it's important that we again highlight um, the methodology that's behind it. So we have a, a short overview of that also on the website. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna spend time on this because we've already heard about it as well. But then the exciting news, I think, is that um, we can first look at sectors. So um, before we go into, into, into the invested investment opportunity areas, we see here that we are listing um, some of the key sectors as well as subsectors, and we are presenting the data um, that we have obtained, um, which is going to grow with more and more countries coming up. Um, for example, prov providing economic factors such as the ticket size or the in indicative return um, that we've also seen in the sample investment opportunity areas, but also then importantly mapping those um, opportunities to the SDGs, um, both directly and indirectly. And we can break that down even further into subsectors. So we'll get uh, some really interesting um, data uh, for very or more specific um, opportunities, for example, here in the appliance manufacturing subsector. We'll also have um, a view of the data uh, or the investment opportunity areas on a map, which of course is um, where the map or the name SDG Investor Map is coming from. So if we are seeing the um, opportunities here and um, diving into the African continent and go even further, um, in this case, Nigeria, but uh, just more or less uh, in the neighborhood, um, we'll have Ghana where we can see that within the country, um, where specifically also are the, the investment opportunity areas. And before I dive into the presentation of one of those sample investment opportunity areas, I would also like to um, emphasize that um, we have put in a lot of effort um, to be able to filter the opportunities so that um, the user can really um, look into those particular opportunities that are most um, interesting for her or for him. So for example, if you're just looking at the African continent, just some specific countries and even potentially some specific sectors, as well as even more um, indicators and data points, um, you could even say that you're just looking at the short-term 
time frame, and that's really where you want to, to focus your attention on, and then you'll be provided with, with investment opportunities coming up here. If we now go into a sample investment opportunity, um, in this case, South Africa, as we are still having some of the dummy data here, um, but uh, we'll soon have live data, including from Ghana as well. We're seeing that uh, we are presenting the investment opportunity area first um, through a summary with some of the key um, data, both from the business as well as from the impact side. And then we really dive um, into those different um, data points that uh, Silvia has already talked about um, just presented in its entirety. Um, so we're looking at partners to, to explore what sort of um, collaboration opportunities may exist in this opportunity. We are um, detailing all the economic factors with um, detailed justification, how we got to those, um, for example, the indicative return and what it is based on. Is it USD or um, local currency um, in a particular country? Again, the location, uh, where in, the, in a specific country um, does it most, does it make most sense to deploy capital in this uh, particular opportunity, uh, both from a return profile, but also from an impact um, profile? And all the way down to the impact case. Um, again, the SDGs, who is uh, impacted, um, the stakeholders, what are some of the impact risks? So meaning what is the possibility that uh, we are not actually achieving the impact that we are set out, uh, that we have set out with this investment opportunity? and the enabling environment as also has been discussed um, with Sylvia. I just want to make one uh, quick emphasis that at the bottom we have the sources of all that data, which I think is going to be helpful just to um, provide that substance, but also for anybody who wants to read up more um, has an opportunity to follow those links and, and look into those um, resources in more detail. We also have an interesting feature um, where we can compare um, some of the investment opportunity areas. So if the user has looked at a couple of them and realizes that she or he doesn't yet know which one is, is most attractive to her or him, um, there's an opportunity to look at them um, next to each other and compare um, uh, to understand what, what is most conducive um, for uh, my own particular purpose. Um, we don't just want to present the data through this SDG investment platform, but we also want to provide an opportunity to the user um, to create an account in order um, for the user to be able to connect um, with other users, so other um, investors or businesses that are um, active on the platform to actually explore potentially collaborations or even investment opportunities um, between investors and businesses but also for us to, uh, or for the user to be, get in touch with UNDP and explore partnership UNDP, uh, opportunities and to understand um, where some of those facilitation support um, may be required that um, Silvia has discussed, both in terms of the convenings for matchmaking, but also with regards to, um, to the policy dialogues um, to uh, strengthen the, the policy environment. So that's just a sneak peek of the platform. Um, some of the data is uh, real already. Some of it is a uh, dummy, um, but please keep uh, a lookout on our um, websites and social media channel as we are planning to launch the live platform to the public um, in April. So, um, and then we hope that the data will be very accessible for everyone. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, David Muller for demonstrating to us uh, the CSDG investment platform. And ahead of that, we had Sylvia Senu from the UNDP Ghana economic analyst who took us through a presentation on the investor map and they gave us the methodology and the deep dive. We thank you for, for your comments and for this walkthrough into this, this new tool. It's an investment intelligence tool that should help a lot of people to see where the opportunities are. There's really a lot to talk about regarding the future of these investment sectors and investment opportunity areas. And we'll, sh we'll surely be he hearing from our panel shortly, but for now, we, we want to speak to the audience. So we've put up a poll just before we go into the panel. And by the way, for those of you who want questions answered, we'll do those questions towards the end. Okay, so now, which priority sectors are you interested in learning more about? This is another multiple choice option. So you can click on all five or six, if you show, so please. Or if you're thinking, I'm gonna drill down to just infrastructure, you can do that. So that'll give us a sense of where 
this audience is moving towards. So which priority sectors are you interested in learning more about? And right after this poll, we'll dive into our panel discussion. We're transitioning into the last part of today's event, which is a panel. And shortly I'll bring up the, the panelists and we'll have a, a chat on the, on the SDG invest, impact investor maps for Ghana. So this is the poll question, which priority sectors are you interested in learning more about? And um, I can see that the poll results uh, are being tabulated. People are still voting, which is great. Um, I wish national elections were like this, you know, swift and very quick, you know, 20 seconds results are out, and then we get on with our lives. So yeah, which priority sectors are you interested in learning about? It's all becoming up pretty soon. And there it is, um, agriculture is on top of the, the league. 64% of you are interested in agriculture followed by tech and communications, 61%. I heard something about drones when Sylvia was speaking, followed by infrastructure, 46%. And then we have healthcare, 41%, consumer goods, 29%, and others not mentioned in the previous five, 7%. Thank you so much for taking part in this poll. And that leads us perfectly into our panel discussion that we are about to dive into. Um, I'm really excited about um, this panel because the, the perspectives are varied. And I am sure that by the end of the panel discussion, you will have more insights into these SDG impact investor maps and where you think, depending on where you are, the investments will be going. So um, it's my pleasure to invite our panelists to join us for this discussion. On today's event, it's on the SDG Investor Maps and the Ghana CARES program, which Dr. Lucidi mentioned um, briefly. So our panelists are Frederick Mugisha, who's a Senior Economics Advisor at UNDP Ghana, Yofi Grant, who is Chief Executive Officer at the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, it's Emmanuel Doni Kwame, Secretary General of the ICC Ghana, and the 4BBT partner, Gifty Kwashi, who is co-founder of Tech Shelter, and last but not the least, Philip Figo, Senior Director for Africa Thunderbird School for Global Management. So these are our panelists for today's event. Panelists, uh, you are all most welcome to our conversation. So um, this is how we're going to go about it. I'm going to ask you to briefly introduce yourselves and share your reflections your reflections, your thoughts, your ideas on the investor maps, of course, situating it in the Ghana context and with a view to how these maps can mobilize resources towards the SDGs agenda based on your fields, where you are, okay? So I'm gonna start um, with uh, Mr. Uh, Frederick Mugisha, Senior Economics Advisor at UNDP Ghana. So just briefly, your perspective, your reflections on the investor maps, Mr. Mugisha. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, let, let me just answer uh, the question that was put online, which is how does the SDG investor map relate to the rest of the SDG financing initiatives? Mm -hmm. And so the way, the way to look at it is that uh, financing is both the money that you have and the investments. And so that's, for example, why you see in, the, in the Ghana Cares, we have 100 billion Ghana cities, but part of it is investment and part of it will be cash. And so the SDG investor maps will help now push the intelligence that is uh, wanted to be able to bring these investments on board. And so when we, we talk about the gap, then the SDG investor maps help bring that intelligence. I just want to add a one more uh, one more issue is that so we we are now in the in the continental free trade area and where the we are expected to promote investments that across the continent. And I think for me what it comes out is that if we can make the SDG investor maps a, a vehicle that can help us identify the investments that are required across the continent. I think that would be very helpful. And it, that's also uh, what Angela pointed out, 
that it would also be very useful in terms of investing in these SDG investor maps uh, in MMDs, so that local economies can also have a mechanism that allows them to identify what investment opportunities they, they are, and then bring the diaspora uh, okay. onto them, plus other investors that may want to, to, to engage in that. So let me stop there and give a chance to others. Of, of course, but before you go, just for those who are curious who you are, just tell us what you do, your name and what you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, my name is Frederick Mugisha. I am the economics advisor for UNDP. And uh, I also uh, head our work on inclusive development. So I'm very excited to be here as well. Thank you. Happy to have you here as well, thrilled to have you. So let me go to uh, Yofi Grant, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. Your reflections on the SDG uh, investor maps and then uh, just your thoughts on, on how uh, they can mobilize res resources towards achieving the SDG agenda based I mean, on how I'm, you see. Okay, um, good afternoon. Go yes, um, it's very interesting, very interesting uh, methodologies and very interesting ob observations. I mean, I, but uh, I, I have to put in the context of um, a country's uh, priorities, I'm going, um, what the country's priorities are. And uh, three points just come to me immediately. That, um, first of all, we have to test to see if they are in consonance with uh, national economic development objectives. Because there's a tendency for something that looks very interesting um, uh, to be assumed that is workable, but may not necessarily align with um, um, the country's um, investment or national development objectives. Um, and so that, that is uh, one that comes out that I think we need to find a way to make sure that they actually coalesce into one um, you know, uh, thing. So if it's Ghana, yes, of course, Agri is, a, is, is, is um, I should I say, a strategic national objective, but is the priority in the areas that are aligned in the investor map. It may be that for us, it may be production and distribution, and that's it, that will solve the problem. Then, of course, so the priority issue is good. And then um, there's also the political will. And I bring this up because I've said on many international fora and platforms that the, the measurement, even the objective measurement of SDGs gets very difficult because the, the definition of an SDG differs from a developing country to a developed country. And therefore the sort of outcomes that we expect may be measured with the wrong tools. Um, I, and I give the example, if you talk of education, um, SDG education, um, the kind of educational needs we need in a developing country, let's say in Ghana, will be very different from what Finland or Denmark would need. And in measuring them, we have to define what our criteria are and how to achieve them. Now, in doing so, will it then be globally accepted that, well, Ghana achieved this because this is what they saw as the need and this is what they saw as the achievement or the thing. So those are uh, the sort of um, two things that really jump out. Alignment with national objectives and the political will we're making sure that it's in consonance with uh, development objectives of any strategy of any particular country, whatever it is. But we at uh, GIPC, we've been working with uh, the World Economic Forum and the one or two consultants to try and even create a more, what I'll call a more critical element of all this, which is sustainable investment or sustainable finance. And this is important because if, if you come to Ghana, for example, I put a number of uh, private sector people together and that issue came out of uh, that, the mutual generator things. And I speak to them about SDGs. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, their feeling is that these are some terms and conditions that have been brought by a foreign body uh, for, uh, for us to abide by. And if you look at the history of it, there, was, there used to be the MDGs and then another five years became the SDGs. And I've had people ask me, so what's going to evolve in the next five to 10 years? from MDGs, okay. MDGs, going to be QDGs or RDGs, or whatever it is. Those are very important things. So there is the issue of clear understanding, alignment and definitions of what these things mean. Indeed. And, and though okay. we have to globally endorse it, and I clearly understand it, but how to translate and percolate it into bite size that the private sector can easily identify is important. But okay. all of us are lost. Those are good points. 
the, the last point I'll make, all hope is not lost, because if you look at the 17 SDGs and you actually titrate them alongside each other, I mean, titrate them individually, you'd realize that for any developing country, their development objectives all land on the SDGs, whether it's education, whether it's health, whether it's, I mean, SDG education. one. It's poverty, uh, uh, po poverty elimination. That is what any nation should do in any case. Nobody wants to be poor. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, SDG I get you. SD 17, in the context of the world today, it must be partnerships and linkages. Um, okay. And Great stuff. Just programs. So, we must understand that partnerships and linkages will make SDGs successful. It's not um, individually structured programs. Fantastic. So a lot, lot to think about there. Have, we have to have things in sync. You have to make sure that the, the SDGs are translated into at the national level so people understand them and then the political will has to be there. Thank you very much, Mr. Grant. I'm going to go to Philip Figo. Please uh, introduce yourself and give us your brief reflections on the conversation we've been having so much on investor maps and how they can mobilize resources for building that agenda. Philip. So Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I think for me, I, again, Philip Tigo, Senior Director for Africa for, for Thunderbird School of Global Management. I'm based out of Nairobi, so please consider this my very humble um, kind of comments uh, coming from another country. Uh, but also, I think I work with UNDP on a couple of things, especially around digital. So I think for me, when I look at this investor map, I think, honestly, it's a roadmap, right, of what is possible when government and private sector collaborate with the aim of ensuring meaningful development outcomes, right? While creating opportunities for everybody, whether it's youth, private sector, and anybody else. So I love that as a base because then we are seeing opportunity, but also we're seeing development at the center. The second piece, of course, I come from a heavy digital background. <laughs> and so for me then is, is to begin to understand how digital permeates across uh, all the sectors that have been identified. Because when I look at, when I look at, for example, agriculture that everybody has said is important, I do not necessarily look at agriculture, I look at farm to fork, right? So, so how can digital technology enhance that entire value chain, right? So that we create opportunity for everybody. When we talk about, when Silvia was talking about irrigation, how do we also not, not necessarily look at irrigated land, but having efficiencies uh, using technology on how we, we use finite resources more, efficiently. When you look at the lake economy, of course, you have the blue economy that has not been tapped and how can we develop that? But I think I want to frame this into quick five buckets, even as we look at infrastructure, there's affordable housing and, and new technologies that are emerging around how to build houses, 3D printing and all that. So the first thing, of course, is data. You cannot do anything without data. Uh, even if you're talking about a, a, a artificial intelligence or 5G or 3G, we need data that is quality accessible. We've not done any uh, meaningful agriculture sensors or neither fish stock mapping. And that's not only Ghana, it's across the continent. The second piece is internet. Yes, access to it, but it needs to be reliable. Uh, we know these cuts all the time, right? Uh, beyond even affordability, but also it needs to be accessible for everybody. The third piece is skilling. And I didn't see this across here. We need to skill, reskill and upskill, especially with this accelerated pace of development. The fourth mm. piece is energy. We've talked about clean, clean cooking, which really I would like to congratulate Her Excellency, uh, Madam Baumia, who's really a champion on clean cooking technologies. But then how are we looking at energy? Because that's what will run everything, whether it's agriculture, whether it's transport or infrastructure. The, first, the last piece is agile governance. How will we govern? And how will you ensure that our governance of things is responsive? to these um, changes, whether it's how private sector government collaborate, whether it's to, to create governance systems that are opening transparency and accountability. And I think Ghana is a leader when you talk about open government, or open contracting, or beneficial ownership. Let me just end there. Thank you very much, uh, Philip. So keep, I remember those five fingers on my hand, data, internet, scale, energy, and governance. Thanks a lot. Don, uh, Mr. Manuel, Don Kwame, brief introduction and your reflections on the theme that we are discussing today. Yeah, um, it's good to be part of the panel. Um, as you already mentioned, uh, um, Emmanuel Donikwami, the Secretary General for the International Chamber of Commerce in Ghana. And uh, we part of the um, partnership that launched the For Better Business Together uh, program, which is uh, um, was meant to see to it that we rebuild better together uh, post-COVID. 
And uh, one of uh, the offshoots of the program is the development of an SDG investor map. Um, today's event is, is the launch, which also highlights the SDG gaps, uh, not within the cities, but in the district, which also presents the various investment opportunities for those of us in the private sector. But the unique thing about this is that uh, you cannot manage something that you cannot measure. And so the, the investor maps uh, also helps provide the tools for people to measure um, the impact of whatever investment they have in any district and its effect on the development of the community as a whole. Um, we've all realized that uh, there's been some social improvement, technological progress, uh, digitization, but uh, our rate of development looks like uh, our Sussex is, is a bit flawed. And the only way out uh, from research is that if as businesses who align all our action plans uh, alongside the SDGs, uh, we tend to grow our businesses better and then our business will be profitable and it's also sustainable. Um, listening to the presentation, I realized there are some issues that we highlighted. When you asked us to vote, I actually clicked on infrastructure. And uh, it's, it's a key thing and we've all realized that government cannot do it alone. Uh, we need the private sector to partner. That's how come we have uh, public-private partnerships. And, and uh, we all need to come together to make sure the basic infrastructure is there. Uh, if we talk about affordable households, uh, I was part of uh, some discussion that was even actually looking at our history, that the type of architecture we had in the olden days, uh, um, talking of Nubian architecture, had the climate in, in, as part of it. Uh, what was missing in the presentation, as far as our group is concerned, is a bit on agro processing because a place like Ghana, our biggest challenge has to do with post-harvest losses. And uh, if we need to store in the perishable product, it's either you need a cold environment or you right. need to... And you also present a lot of opportunities by adding value. I was just talking to a micro, small, uh, mini uh, uh, trader who sells fruits. And you may be selling banana in a day or two, they all get uh, bad. But all these bananas can be turned into banana cake and sold to school kids, you know. So we need to look at how best we deal with our post harvest losses. Okay. Some serious investment. Then the issue of land also comes in. Uh, right. We have the land, land use management and planning. Irrigation was raised. A lot is being done. One district, uh, one village, one down. Yeah. So we need to make sure we get those things right. But agro processing is key, uh, not just a story. How do we deal with post harvest losses when we want to get people uh, involved in uh, agriculture? Um, with technology, yeah, we, we've gone far with our digitization. We now have the national identification uh, from what we learned from the state of the nation address. Um, um, we, we, we have a digital address, but we need to find a way of how to link the digital address to our physical address. Uh, okay. that's what we in the area right. of our culture, there is the need to get a lot of technology involved in our fishing industry in particular. In Morocco, I know uh, they do use uh, sonar technology in fishing. Um, even the mechanical way of even drawing our net, you know, and then if we really don't have it, there's it's abundant. We can learn from others within the sub region what they've done so far. So All there right. is a lot that can be done. There's a lot to be uh, done. Okay. Yeah, I believe the investor mark is a first step. Uh, okay. Right. If people will be available to make their finances available to the private sector, so that the cost of credit can also be afforded. Always come down. Yes, and businesses want that. They want the cost of credit to come down. I can see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. Uh, nodding Thank you. enthusiastically. I'm going to bring Gifty in right now. Thank you very much, Shimano Doni Kwame, for your thoughts. So, Gifty, so um, introduce yourself and uh, feel free to ask questions of all the people who have spoken before you. Yeah, so go ahead. So, let us know who you are, your reflections, and then you can probably pose a question to maybe, maybe Mr. Grant or I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> 
All right, so thank you very much and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone watching. So my name is again, my name again is Gifty Mita Apashi. I am a co-founder of Tech Shelter Company Limited, an agribusiness company in Ghana, of course. Um, we started in the year 2018 and we are into the greenhouse sector or greenhouse space. So what Tech Shelter does is we provide services for greenhouse farmers in Ghana and beyond. And we started in the year 2018 under the Cosmos Innovation Center Agritech Challenge Program, where we brought about, um, or we identified a challenge within the agriculture space, where we know that about 70% of greenhouse farmers are actually not really meeting their expected use due to so many challenges within the sector. So ranging from knowledge gap, inefficiency, manual operations, and lack of markets and support. Then we brought about a solution to help those greenhouse farmers. That is, we provided a web and mobile based application to enable those greenhouse farmers to have on demand access to advisory service, automation, market linkages, and training. So, um, your question again to um, the Investor Map um, Initiative it's really a step in the right direction. Honestly, I'm very excited. A lot of people are really championing the whole. Um, agenda for agriculture to be better because the continent can make it if the continent can make it of course we need to um, empower the agriculture sector from the rural areas the smallholder farmers young people youth coming on board so with the presentation that have gone on from sylvia marios and my able um, co-panelists i think it's a step in the right direction and indeed we are leaving no one behind from the health sector infrastructure I mean, it cuts across board. So for me, as a young person, I feel it's really a step in the right direction and I'm excited for what the future holds for Ghana and the youth in general, right? Okay, let me take you up on, thank you, thanks for that, by the way, Gifty. But let me just uh, zero in on, you, you, you talked about the, the fact that you don't want to leave people behind and the rural regions of, 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 of Ghana, how do you see these investor maps helping them, you know, where, most of the agriculture takes place in that part of the country. How would this map help um, a farmer, an aged farmer or some young farmer in some rural area of Ghana? How is this going to help them? Right. Thank you very much for the um, question, Kofi. Um, you know, of course, in a rural part of this country, a lot of farming activities goes on. I believe when there's a lot of capacity building sessions for this um, rural and farmers or smallholder farmers to understand what investment is about or what the UNDP is trying to do. They can collaborate with farmer-based organization cooperatives to be able to know what UNDP wants to roll out, especially with regards to the investment side. They need to help this um, rural area farmers to put in some form of structure, put in or introduce some form of technology data, how to um, manage their um, their crops. So, for instance, in the outline, so we have mentioned, we have, um, what's it called, data in there. So what we can do is we can empower this um, farmer-based organizations to partner with um, the smallholder farmers to know how to do some basic bookkeeping record, how when they started the same um, growing their crops, when they're going to harvest, gathering some form of data for it to be attractive to um, the investor who is willing to support with some form of technical support or financial support because a lot of investors see agriculture sector as a risk factor like they see it as risky to invest so when these farmers are enabled or maybe um, given the opportunity to understand what investment is about and what the space or the investor map is about they would be able to gain some form of support from the UN and the UNDP and the other investors on board so that's what I can say. Right. Well, thank you very much, Gifty. I want to jump back to uh, Mr. Donny Kwame, but before that, I want to get to uh, Mr. Grant. So you head up the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, bringing money into the country to develop whatever industries. How will these uh, intelligence, investment intelligence, uh, all this investment intelligence data, how, how will this help your work to boost investment into Ghana? I am not hearing Yofi right now. I think your microphone is on mute. If you can unmute your microphone, Yofi. Thank my you. apologies. I, no I problem. Go ahead. Some... Did you hear my, qu my question, sir? I heard your question very loud and clear. Good. Yes. I and, want to and, hear from and you. I think, 
It's it's um, the roadmap is very important in, in providing data and information on specific areas um, that uh, may create, I mean, opportunity for private sector investors apart from the state in itself. So it is very important. I mean, that's half the work that I would do because clearly they've gone through and even done a bit of the financing modeling work to give you returns, et cetera, which are very important for an investor, especially for the very for the unsophisticated investor. Um, when he gets the data right in front of him, it makes it easier for him to analyze and say that I'm going to do this. For the sophisticated investor, he wants to come and feel, see, look at policy areas, look at, you know, how finance is mobilized, the more, more important in the side. So it is very important um, for us as a tool which we can actually use um, in speaking to potential investors um, who are looking at these specific areas. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's extremely useful, I would say. Um, I, I would, uh, on the back of that, go beyond and um, I think do a little bit more because um, the issue of sustainable investment and sustainable finance is critical. And I keep saying this because, I, as I said earlier on, we don't want investors and especially people in Ghana, especially people in the private sector, to think that the SDG is another buzzword coming from the World Bank, the UNDP or anything. We want them to recognize these as, as real opportunities that are actually achievable and have impact. But don't you think the uh, government should, 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 should take the role in breaking this, these SDGs down to the level where your public in the streets knows that this is not something that is just being foisted on them, but it, absolutely. it's something that, I mean, that absolutely. is getting, yeah. You, you are spot on, you are spot on. I mean, that it, it, needs, to, it needs to be understood in the, in the framework of a normal life, that SDGs are not messages necessarily from heaven or anywhere, but they are things with us. I mean, if you need access to education, you need access to education, you need good, clean, portable water, you do need clean, portable water. If you must have health, you must have good health. So they, that needs to, that, that whole message needs to percolate down. And I guess um, those of us, who work in government, it's our responsibility to do that. I mean, um, the UNDP and the partners would have crafted a very important tool which can be used. Uh, I'm, I don't think they are forcing it down anybody's throat. If it's useful to you, then you should pick it and says, okay, this is very useful. We can use this for these ends. But first of all, let's get people to conceptually understand what the SDGs are because working with investors, yeah, working with investors is, is sometimes Interesting when you mention SDGs, they, they all just go back. Says, I, I'm not interested in the SDGs. I'm interested in opportunity. But the <laughs> opportunity lies in the SDGs, you know. Yes. And the good thing about it being defined in the role of SDGs is that okay. it serves an investment um, um, uh, opportunity, but it also serves a developmental. Exactly. I think we're having, a, um, he just froze almost there. Uh, um, Mr. Grant is off now, so I will just get back to him later. Let me see if, whether I can get uh, Philip. Philip, are you are you with me? So, yes, I am. And I'll get to you soon, uh, Imano. But Philip, I just wanted to know uh, why we are trying to raise back Mr. Grant. So, you see, the service industry um, was left out of, of these maps. It's still quite important. Um, is this a, a fatal flaw that is not part of of the investor maps? Well, I don't know. I, I, do, I wasn't part of the design process. Let me just say that. I don't know the mm -hmm. logic um, mm -hmm. of why the service piece was left out. But I think for me, when you look at the SDGs, right? Um, and and, and the, I just to connect with the previous speaker. I mean, I honestly, uh, for me, it's not about, uh, and even in your previous question to Gifty, right? It's really not about the tool, right? I think for me, it's about the process. Uh, and so the, the process is about co-creating this agreed upon um, pieces that we think government and private sector can co-create, right? Because this is, it's not saying private sector invest, actually it's public and private sector co-investing. Right. The benchmark simply means that it's just not about a project. When you say SDGs, it's about transforming lives and society. So, so, so I think in there, in, I believe that the service industry is implied. Right, but because then the map, then I think for me, when you think about, 
it's a roadmap. And really, it is a roadmap. So it's to think about, it's a conversation starter. For me, for example, I would use this anywhere to actually start a, a, a conversation that is informed by data. It's not everything, but then it brings people on the table to start okay. having these uh, discussions that you and I have. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Yofi Grant is back. Thanks a lot. But before I get back to you, I just want to speak with uh, Mr. Donny Kwame. So let's be selfish here. How will these investor maps benefit the people in your network, the ICC network? What's in it for you? Um, with, with the maps, as we mentioned, um, at least everybody's been looking for data. Um, we've had data on investment opportunities from KIPC, but this one is narrowed down to uh, some kind of alignment with the sustainable development goals. So the next step is for businesses to incorporate the SDGs into their growth strategies, their value chain uh, operations, and then uh, also look at uh, even their policy positions. And it's, it's research has shown that uh, you tend to reap a lot, you know, it's, it's, it's worth almost $12 trillion if you align your, your growth strategies along the, the goals of the sustainable goals, yeah. So it's, it's, it's something worth uh, promoting amongst uh, the business community. It's, I wouldn't say it's just a buzzword or something from the World Bank or something. COVID, it's, it's been brought it to the fore that Yes, uh, we've, we've had technological progress. We've, we've seen some social development, but still, we, we, we still have it. And uh, from research, if we try to bring everybody up, a good example is uh, on the issue of uh, uh, digitization uh, uh, as part of uh, the presentation. I was discussing with a colleague that what if you have uh, you invest in an internet facility in a village where people cannot afford to pay for? Um, um, in my own small community, they happen to have a training college that just enrolled over a thousand students. So even if the community will not cannot afford it, you know all those yes, students that move from the city to that place will yeah. need we need that service. So. With, with businesses, once you have all these information, then you can strategize and know where to invest. It's not just to look at the district and say, oh, I don't think uh, there's no electricity, there's no water, so I can't do anything. It also presents opportunities for, for you to, to, yes. to do something and the, the returns are quite huge, yeah. Exactly. Where there's a gap, there's always an opportunity. And if you go to where they don't have any shoes, well, you can make shoes for them, you know, and then you make some money. Um, feel free to raise your hand. There's a function on the, on the platform where you can just raise your hand and feel free to cut in. This is not a polite having tea with the queen kind of conversation. You can jump in and, and, and feel free to interrupt. If you don't agree with somebody, please go ahead. Uh, we dropped Frederick, Frederick, but we'll try and get him back. I want to bring on uh, um, Gifty right now. So we are looking at... First of all, do you have anything you want to react to? If not, I'll just ask you a question on, on agri-technology and the future of farming in Ghana. Because I'm sure that should excite you, looking at what Tech Shelter does. And how do these investor maps yeah. lead into this? Let's be selfish for you as well. I mean, how does this help your, your business? All right, so thank you very much for the question once again. So I don't have any questions to ask my co-panelists, but if there is any, I would address accordingly. But in regards to Agritech, Agritech has potential, trust me. So, um, I mean, as Sylvia mentioned, the potential for Agritech is going to be big, but we need to understand that before we go into the, oh my God, I'm sorry. My yeah, but we can still hear you, so keep talking. Just keep speaking, we can still hear you. Yes, yes, we can, can see go you. ahead. Okay. We can see you, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, sure, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so with Agritech Space, I'm very excited that this investment opportunity is coming within the sector. This would encourage a number of youth who are even unemployed to come on board and bring in their innovative skills up. Why am I saying this? So with Tech Shelter, we install Internet of Things as IoT devices on um, existing manual operations such as irrigation systems, extractor fans, misting systems, to be able to monitor or control anything wherever you are 
without being there. That is where the future of Africa is moving into. So the old lady or the young person in the rural community, with the aid of digital technology, you'll be able to have um, irrigation, um, I mean, digitized on your phone with the use of a smart device, or maybe we just configuring the, um, the device to know that, okay, at this time of the day, you should be able to water the crops at this time, which will actually increase food security and it's championing the SGD agenda in, on food security. And aside that, with markets, we are actually helping these farmers to digitize their process. That's within the agri-tech agri um, space. So with regards to market, we are supposed to link these farmers from wherever to Accra to okay. sell their produce okay. across, yes. Let me speak a bit about other startups who are in the system who are actually championing the agri-tech solutions. So let's say Safetech. Safetech is producing or manufacturing um, treasures. And this treasure is a mobile treasure. So you don't need, um, what's it called? You don't need to own one. Someone can be like, let's say, an Uber for treasures. He can actually order on, on phone and then get a treasure to wherever he is. And this actually monitors whether it has data where the treasure is. So the farmer within, let's say, um, a front uh, the north, a front mm -hmm. lanes or the north, can know where treasure is and other one, which is going to okay. help him or her. And not just that, sexy technologies, we have and um, Profish, we have, and um, Profish is actually connecting farmer, um, fisher folks to markets. Those who can't okay. sell their produce, exactly. Profish is their tractor tractor. It's actually the Uber for tractors also in Ghana here, okay. connecting right. tractors. Yes, and all of that. So the future of agri-tech is really huge. And a lot of schools or students who are in the technology space or engineering space can also come on board with their, uh, with their innovations and inventions. So that's all right. Wonderful. Wow, thank you so much. I never knew there was an Uber for tractors. That sounds really, really, really interesting. Um, thank you for th th that perspective. I want to now take it to, to uh, Frederick Mugisha, who will give us the UNDP, the big, the global picture. So we're looking at, after having listened to all that the presenters have said, how will these uh, investor maps benefit, for example, or, or, or um, highlight opportunities in this, the continental free trade area, which is a big talking point right now. How do these investor maps help us to find those opportunities and exploit them for the Mugisha? Mm -hmm. So uh, let, let me begin from uh, uh, what Yofi mentioned, but also what uh, Manuel Doni talked about regarding the information in intelligence, uh, investment intelligence. I mean, you, you recall uh, when we had COVID, uh, everybody knew that COVID was impacting us until Ghana Statistical Service provided the real numbers. And everybody was saying, what? In, in the same fashion, you could say, uh, they, they are uh, MMDS, Sanarubu, Kasana and Ghana. To South, they may want to invest, but they don't have, a, they have a, an idea that this West African road passing through, uh, uh, passing through the district may be useful, but they don't know what investment opportunities that brings. And so they cannot even attract anybody, they cannot talk to anybody in farm towns. And so what these invest, investor maps uh, say is they give them a, an opportunity to begin to say this is what is there. But there is one more thing that the investor maps do. They also tell you the policies that are there, but also the bottlenecks. So government, uh, the, the district can begin to address them. Now, specifically on the question of the continental free trade area, I mean, investments for the continent will not come out of the blue. They will not be in heaven. There will be somewhere, whether these are in Boku South or Sanarugu, they, they will be somewhere. And so the, the idea of beginning to think about investments that have 
and intra-Africa uh, nature become very, very useful. Cashew nuts. Uh, so how then do these investor maps help us with, help with, with identifying opportunities for investment? It may simply be that we just don't have enough barking going on. And that is an investment opportunity, simple, but yet powerful. And that can now reach uh, across the continent. So, so uh, uh, I think the biggest issue is knowing that this is uh, intelligence and as every intelligence, uh, you have to mine the intelligence for, it, for you to inform your investment uh, choices. And so that's what I would, uh, yeah. and, and I'm glad that uh, we are going to go deeper and go sector by sector, but also as more opportunities come, we also identify other investment opportunities that we can add on. Thank you. Thank you too. I want to bring back uh, Yofi Grant, CEO for the Ghana Investment Promotion Center to, um, Give us his thoughts on what you've heard so far. And let's talk about what the government is also doing. I mean, what, what, what government investments are being put in place. Um, yeah, to, to possibly even take advantage of some of this information that is coming out from these investor maps. So take it away, Yofi. You're, we need to unmute you. Uh, so far it's sign language, but if we unmute you, we, we need to unmute. Yes, now we can hear you. <laughs> I, I, I think for us um, and from the government side, this certainly is exciting and it should be taken um, right to the market. Um, uh, from a government perspective, there are, and uh, we as GIPC, there are actually five dimensions that we are trying to establish to enable some of these opportunities uh, be optimized. And so I'll just quickly go through them so you see, and we, we actually putting together a reform package of GIPC's own laws to ensure um, some of these things are, are, are readily consumed by the market. The first is sustainable investment policies, um, which will create an underlying framework for investments to take place in an alignment with environment, social, economic, and governance principles. And I remember that somebody just mentioned governance. It's very important. Now, of course, for example, uh, things like um, they should include human and uh, labor rights, uh, health and safety standards, as well as compliance with social and environmental uh, protection. You know? and, and so um, we need to make sure that even as we are embracing these two, we have in place um, a tool that will also clearly, uh, even beyond the, those that are mentioned in the two, uh, environmental and social impact assessment. Um, these will help us uh, properly define the outcomes and see where, how far we are going. Then, of course, the sustainable finance mobilization um, which would be a framework to facilitate um, the flow of capital, especially the flow of capital to sustainable activities. Um, and this requires, also provided by the tool, and requires um, stakeholders or investors or investee companies to have the information regarding um, the sustainability behavior of different um, opportunities and firms, uh, such that policymakers, regulators, investors, and media, civil society, can reward sustainable behavior and condemn unsustainable behavior. Uh, we've seen quite a lot um, of talk, especially in the extractives industry. So we think that it's, it's important to actually implement a sustainable finance mobilization framework. Then the, the third one um, would be um, what I would call sustainable investment promotion, um, where we can drive investments um, through by targeting investors in the sectors that I already mentioned here and in some other sectors um, to achieve the SDGs. Um, target investors with also a sustainability motive because I know today, even in the um, um, uh, private equity world, most um, limited partners want to ensure that the investments that their funds uh, make are in sustainable areas or at least tick the boxes of having met some sustainability criteria or criteria. And then of course, creating a pipeline of sustainable bankable uh, projects. We've seen quite a number already outlined here, even with the internal rates of return and the returns to investors in it. So that's very, very important. Now the, the bit about uh, we are working with the 
BEF to Crafto, we call the sustainable, um, responsible investor. Um, one that uh, invests in, in, in sustainable areas. And we are proposing that perhaps we should use our incentives better as a nation and give incentives to what we call a, a sustainable, responsible investor, one who achieves the SDGs. Then of course, there's also gonna be um, sustainable investment facilitation, uh, which is with a framework to ensuring greater facilitation services and support to investments that are aligned to the development goals of the economy, as I mentioned before. And so, some of the tools are things like guarantees or insurance to support and protect sustainable investment in, in the agri area, because some of the investors there are really small. And if you look at the, the Ghanaian um, agricultural platform, um, most of them are micro and mini uh, companies um, and medium size. Um, you hardly find very large agri companies, but um, the, because of the small shareholder um, or smallholder farms, you need some of these tools. And then the last one, I would say is a sustainable development impact, which is also captured um, by, this, by the two. And this is to ensure maximization of possible of positive development impact and minimize any potential negative impacts from investments. Um, and we know that um, uh, these are very important even in the large um, um, investments. And this can take place through um, increasing absorptive capacity within the, um, within the country and other countries will benefit from this. Um, indicators to mon monitor and uh, measure impact uh, because as, as we've, we've just said you can't uh, right. uh, you can't measure the monitor and then stakeholder engagement so the conversations have to go on um okay and and in the, in the back of that you should have what we call supplier development programs and efforts to create linkages between foreign and domestic firms because that is how you're best going to uh, facilitate um, foreign direct investment in partnership with the indigenous firms so i think these five dimensions add quite a lot of meat to the the two and uh, we look forward to um, embracing it and using it um, strategically as well. Awesome. So thank you so much, all, all panelists, uh, for your insights and your reflections on the investor maps. Uh, we want to go into the Q&A question and answer session. And I'd like to bring back on a, a previous presenter, Sylvia, to, to answer um, a couple of questions. We'll take final questions and then we'll wrap it up for today's digital event on the SDG Impact Investor Maps. Do we have uh, Sylvia back with us? Yes, yeah. Yes, Sylvia, so take it away, please. I understand you okay, have a question. So, yes. Um, no. So there are quite a number of questions in the chat box. And mm -hmm. I'm now seeing actually the question you were asking, um, Kafri. Okay. Um, what the currency, um, what type of currency was used for the indicative return profile? Mm -hmm. So you, um, Ghana CDs was used, and of course the equivalent was calculated. So it okay. is in Ghana CDs equivalent to USD was used. Quite a number of questions. What I've done is to answer the questions um, in the chat box. So far, I think I only have about three questions left unanswered. So one is really the currency question, which um, I think I have cleared. Um, the next one is um, a follow-up question from a, um, one of our anonymous attendees who wants to know how we can follow up with these dotted initiatives. And I wanted to say that um, if you are interested in the space, you have to watch out for the space. So for instance, um, if you registered um, for this meeting and you didn't use your right profiles, we are not able to reconnect with you. So I would encourage um, all our participants to be quite engaged because we are going to have follow-ups. And I like what um, um, Yofi Grant said, the conversations must go on. This is not the end, this is just the beginning. We have to, and we need to have many more of such um, conversations to, for instance, bring up some of the policy regulatory and financial issues that actually are obstacles to scale for the, some of these investment opportunity areas that we've highlighted. And then we have a question on um, what are the measures that have been put in place by private and public agencies such as UNDP uh, and Business for Peace to support agri-tech hubs um, such as Tech Farm Hub, <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm quite familiar with this hub. So um, just to say that there are different initiatives, like I've already said, you need to get yourself engaged. Different opportunities open up, different windows for support open up. Most recently, UNDP um, had um, this innovation challenge where young people were supported with seed funding, mentoring, and coaching. There are many of such initiatives. I know GIPC, um, um, GIZ, is MasterCard, um, World Bank, they are all in support of such initiatives. So you need to put your ear on the ground so that whenever such initiatives are announced, you can take advantage of it. Okay, so um, some of the questions have been picked up by Mugisha. So thank you, um, Kafri. Thank you too, um, Sylvia. And I would like to say thanks to my panel, um, Emmanuel Donny Kwame, Secretary General of the ICC Ghana and a 4BBT partner, so Yofi Grant, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Mr. Frederick Mugisha, Senior Economics Advisor at the UNDP Ghana, Gifty Kwashi, Co-Founder of Tech Shelter, and Philip Figo, Senior Director for Africa Thunderbird School for Global Management. I've been educated a lot. I've enjoyed the conversations. I've learned a lot. Thank you to all of you for making this um, great. We thank you for your time, it's very valuable and we are glad and privileged to have all of you here with us. Thanks a lot. Don't go anywhere, don't sign off yet because uh, we, we um, I'm, I'm gonna hand the microphone back to Dr. Angela Lusigi, who uh, spoke earlier uh, when we started the presentation. She's a UNDP re re resident representative for Ghana and she will give us her closing remarks Thanking all of you, first of all, for attending and having me as your host. It was an honor to be part of this initiative and to see the progress for, for better business together. Now, to you, Dr. Angela Lusigi, for your closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Honorable Deputy Minister Designate, if you're still with us, excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that you found this discussion on Ghana's own investor map both inspiring and valuable. I certainly benefited from having a glimpse of solid investment opportunities for advancing the SDGs in Ghana, as well as hearing the ideas from all the speakers and panelists, including your contributions that were captured in the poll and in the chat. Just remember, when profit meets purpose, we get social impact. And we all would like to get much more social impact and meaningful development outcomes for all. And this evolving roadmap will help to make this happen because now we have real investment intelligence and localized data. As was mentioned, this conversation is not over. We look forward to your active participation in future dialogues where we'll be able to delve a lot deeper into specific investment opportunity areas because together, we hope to turn these development challenges into development solutions. For more information about the SDG investor maps, uh, please reach out to UNDP and my colleague Frederick Mugisha and the entire SDG investor map team are on standby to answer your questions and you'll, you'll find some information uh, put up later. It's our sincere hope that you've been able to take away key aspects from Ghana's priority national development programs and to see how investing in these areas will help to reshape the pro-business landscape in Ghana in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, we hope that the map becomes an extremely useful tool for change and a platform to bring public and private partners closer together so we can contribute to a stronger recovery from COVID-19 and put Ghana back on the path to the achievement of the SDGs. As we've heard from our panelists, the contributions from businesses, both large and small, towards facilitating a quicker, greener, and more inclusive economic recovery that preserves livelihoods will help to safeguard the future of Ghana's youth and bring lasting prosperity for all. On behalf of UNDP, I would like to thank all the project partners for their tireless efforts to make this Ghana investment map come to life. PwC, Business for Peace Foundation based in Norway, International Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Ministry of Finance for their leadership. Thank you for joining us on this journey. 
and we hope that you will take the time to fill the post-event survey that's being sent your way following the close of this event. Thank you all and have a good day. And of course, a big thank you to our moderator who has uh, shepherded us through this event. Thank you so much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, I've enjoyed this session. Thanks to all our speakers, our panelists. It's been wonderful, our backroom staff tirelessly working to make sure that this flight went through the turbulence and landed at its expected destination. I thank you all and um, get in touch with uh, UNDP Ghana and for more information and let's make sure that these uh, investor maps can do what they set out to do. I want to say thank you very much and uh, it's been a pleasure. My name is Kafui Day um, and uh, get in touch with uh, uh, Frederick.Mugisha at UNDP.org for more information, it was on the slide. So thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the day, wherever you are. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good night. God bless.